welcome back to Sunrise Meditations on the beautiful and serene Enders Island. Today is a Christmas weekday, and I'm your host, Deacon Francis Valier. Alexio Divina, our divine reading, is from the first letter of St. John, chapter 5, verses 5 through 13. Let us begin our prayer in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Almighty, ever-living God, who through your only begotten Son have made us a new creation for yourself, grant, we pray, that by your grace we may be found in the likeness of him in whom our nature is united to you, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. And now let us listen and attend to our scripture passage. A reading from the first letter of St. John. Beloved, who indeed is the victor over the world, but the one who believes that Jesus is the Son of God? This is the one who came through water and blood, Jesus Christ, not by water alone, but by water and blood. The Spirit is the one who testifies, and the Spirit is truth. So there are three who testify, the Spirit, the water, and the blood, and the three are of one accord. If we accept human testimony, the testimony of God is surely greater. Now the testimony of God is this, that he has testified on behalf of his Son. Whoever believes in the Son of God has this testimony within himself. Whoever does not believe God has made him a liar by not believing the testimony God has given about his son. And this is the testimony. God gave us eternal life, and this life is in his son. Whoever possesses the son has life. Whoever does not possess the son of God does not have life. I write these things to you so that you may know that you have eternal life you who believe in the name of the Son of God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Today's reading is taken from the third part of this first letter of St. John, the source of love and faith, we might title it. And it speaks about the source of our faith. To understand this reading, we also need to know that John is speaking in the context of Gnostic teachings, which said that the Spirit of God entered Jesus only at his baptism and left him before his death on the cross. John begins today's passage by asking, who can overcome the world? He means this not in any triumphalistic um, uh, or dominating way, about the world in general, but rather using world in the sense of asking who is the one who has the ability to overcome the evil tendencies with which our lives are surrounded. The implication is that it is someone who directly came to grips with the world, not an outsider. The answer is that it is the one who has total faith in Jesus as the Son of God. Faith in Jesus, who not only came through the water of his baptism, but in water and in blood, where blood signifies Jesus' death on the cross. All of this is testified to by the Spirit, who with the testimony of the water and blood, which followed from the breast of the dead Jesus, form one single witness to the identity and the work of Jesus Christ. It is John in his gospel, St. John in his gospel, who tells us that after Jesus died, they pierced his side with a spear, and at once blood and water poured forth, simplifying, signifying, both his sacrificial death and his baptism in the Spirit. So there are three who testify, the Spirit, the water, 
and the blood, and the three are of one accord. The Spirit pervades the life and death of Jesus. He was born in the Spirit, baptized in the Spirit, and Jesus died in the Spirit, the Spirit of God. The blood and the water were the evidence for the original eyewitnesses, but they are also the witness for all Christians as to the type of baptism and sacrificial death of Jesus, which are operative in our own lives. For us, it is essential to our understanding of Jesus that it was the incarnate Son of God who died on the cross. Otherwise, his death would not have had its redemptive and atoning effect. To believe in Jesus as the Son of God is to accept this testimony as that of God himself. Not to believe in the witness that Jesus has given by his life and death is to make a liar out of God. For God gave us eternal life, and this life is in his Son. And so, whoever possesses the Son possesses life. This is not merely a statement to be accepted. It's a reality that can be experienced and should be experienced. It is in the experience that we know its truth. In the Gospels, Jesus tells us again and again that he has come to give life to the world. And we know from experience that all those who commit themselves to Jesus in his gospel experience this very life. That life is open to every one of us, provided we, in a spirit of total trust and faith, surrender ourselves to Jesus as Lord and Savior. But it is not given willy-nilly, nor is it forced on us. We must open our hearts and allow God's love and life to flow in. Something to ponder. As usual, after our closing prayer, we read this scripture passage again. Contemplate its message and concentrate on a thought that comes to you either through a small word that touches you or a verse um, and something that the Holy Spirit speaks to your heart. And then ask the Holy Spirit to show you how it pertains to you, how you may spiritually grow closer to our brother Jesus in friendship. Let us complete our divine reading with a closing prayer. Governed by your Holy Spirit, we pray, O Lord, those who contemplate and embrace your divine word, that professing you not just in words, but also in works and in spirit and in truth, we may merit to enter the kingdom of heaven through Christ our Lord. Amen. May the peace of the Lord Jesus be upon you always and in always. And may his generous blessings fill your day with joy. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, amen. If you enjoy listening to these daily meditations, please click the like button. And if you haven't already done so, please ring the bell by clicking on that bell icon and subscribe all button and help support our channel. Share these links with others and pass them along to your friends and relatives as well. God bless you all. Have a great day. And join us again tomorrow for another Lexio Divina, a divine reading of God's sacred word. Pax et bonum omnibus. Peace and blessings to all.